All right, welcome back to another session of Pellet Tech 101. Uh, we're sticking here with the Harman feed system, and uh, in this video, I want to go over how we replace a direct drive auger motor in a Harman stove. So, depending on the on the make and the model and the year of manufacture with Harman, uh, some units had a chain driven feed system, some units had a direct drive feed system. So today we're going to focus on how we remove the auger feed motor on a direct drive system. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this. Again, depending on your Harman model, always number one, we want to make sure that it's unplugged from the wall anytime we're working with anything electrical back here. Uh, number two, a lot of times it is easier to pull it away from the wall so that we have a little bit more room to work for it. Generally speaking, to access this auger motor on most of those models, you will be removing the side and the rear panels to gain access here. Once we have access to it, essentially we just need a 7 16 wrench and a 5 16 inch wrench as we look to pull this auger motor off. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is here. There is a bracket or an arm right here that is holding to the auger motor as kind of a mount plate. So I'm going to just pivot this a little bit so that we can see it properly. Now on this bracket right here, we just have two 5 16 inch bolts that are holding that in place. So we're just gonna get those loosened up. If you're having a tough time budging those through, just use a little bit of WD-40, let it soak on there for a little bit. But generally speaking, uh, these bolts are pretty straightforward uh, to, uh, to take out. We set that over the side, and then we have one that's just down below right here. A little bit more before we even tune it with our fingers. Take that last one out. So as soon as we pull out that last bolt, this uh, basically this mount arm or, or swing arm right here, we can just kind of have that off to the side. And then we have a main set bolt right over here. And I'm just going to move this around quickly so that can be shown or that can be seen. But we have a main set bolt right there that is essentially running through that collar and securing to the flat edge of that auger shaft. So that is going to be the next bolt here that we go ahead and remove. Same thing, generally this, uh, this isn't cranked down, but if it's difficult, let it soak for a little bit. With this bolt, we're essentially just loosening this up. We don't need to pull it all the way out. As we do that, I'm just going to wiggle this auger motor, and the auger motor will pull out. And you can see right where that bolt was securing to the shaft. I mean, there's a nice, tight, snug fit on there. But as soon as we loosen it up, the auger motor, just give it a little wiggle, it will pull out. We have uh, two wires coming off the auger motor right here. And we're just going to go ahead and remove the connectors that we have. It does not matter which wire goes to which. We're just creating continuity there. Again, if they're difficult, you can use a pliers or just wiggle them with your fingers until you're able to pull those connectors off. That one was a little tight. <laughs> But that is our auger motor. Now that our auger motor is out, gives you kind of a greater feel of the feed system that's in here as well. Uh, how the rollers work with the arms as that moves that slide plate back and forth to feed fuel into the burn pot. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put the auger motor back in. Um, obviously, if you have a replacement motor, you're going to put the replacement motor back in and just going to go through those steps uh, in this particular video. So first off, I'm just going to go ahead and get this lined up. So again, very important that we're lining up the flat edge of this shaft with this bolt that is securing. It. So I'm paying very close attention to the positioning of that as I move this into that female shaft. 
And again, the, the placement is also very important. As you can see, there's a lot of different areas where I can lock this down. I tell a person, really, you wanna make sure that this is pushed in until you feel a stop before you start tightening down this bolt. We don't wanna have it here and tighten it down because things won't line up correctly, our rollers will not line up correctly, and we're gonna cause some issues. So once we have the new motor in place, we're gonna push it all the way in where we can kind of feel it bottom out or we can feel it stop. I've made sure that that flat edge is lined up with this bolt. I'm gonna tighten it just a little bit with my fingers at first. I'm gonna make sure that the roller that's on this is still centered within this arm. Okay, and I'm just gonna grab a, another real quick view here of what I'm talking about. But this little roller that's right here, I'm gonna make sure that that is centered within that arm. As you can see, I have a little bit of play with where that can be. So again, we wanna make sure that that is centered within the arch arm. Okay. So again, just kind of tighten this down with my fingers at first. Everything looks to be in proper alignment. We're gonna go ahead and tighten that up. And again, I don't need to reef on it, but I do want this tight. So. Now that we have that tight in there, and we can see that our bearing is clearly centered on this arm, we can go ahead and put back in the screws that hold this mount plate right here. And as you see, I mean, this has some play too as far as where that can be or where that can mount. We don't want to have this cocked at an angle like this. I mean, we really want to have this nice and flat and flush as it lines up with these holes. So I'm just going to grab my 5 sixteenths, and we're just going to start by threading these in by our, our fingers first. And I know there's not a lot of room to work here as you're in this system. Your door's locked. And now that we have those both threaded in with our fingers like this, I'm gonna grab that 5 16 We're gonna tighten them down. I don't need to crank on these, I just want them snug. All right. Now that I have them snugged up back there, I will retake our black lead wires right here. And I will connect them to the lead wires coming through. Again, it does not matter which connects to which. Oftentimes we'll have a black and a white uh, as far as wire color, but it does not matter which connects to which. Make sure that we got good secure connection. And that is the replacement of a Harman direct drive auger motor. Uh, any questions in particular regarding your unit, uh, need some further tips, whatever the case might be, just leave a comment in the video below. We're always happy to help and look forward to seeing you again on the next session of Pelotech 101. Thanks.